Hello, I'm Bruce Gunter, um, one of the organisers of the Hall in the Hume truck run. Uh, this is our third event. We decided it was a good idea to, to try and do this back in 2011 um, as a, instead of doing a static display. Um, it started off with my father and I in our old Kamenoka running along to Alice Springs to the reunion in 2010 and the old man was saying to me I'd love to do a trip down the old road which he knew all about, I knew nothing about. And, um, and when we came back we decided to, to do something about that and I got to, together with um, Brad Dwyer who was the president of the Western Sydney Historical Track Club and another um, old mate of ours, an old Cummins mechanic by the name of Ron Kirk and we started talking about it and we just thought well why not. There's static displays that are held everywhere and the static displays are great but we realised that what we loved to, about the static display was driving there and then driving home. So great to stand around and be able to talk but it's, it's actually getting them out on the road and, and that was how it grew but we knew that we liked the idea of that but we didn't know that so many other people would like it and that's why it's become such a popular run. There's, there's a great cross-section of vehicles here and it, and it all depends on people's, um, people's tastes and I love to see a vehicle that's restored completely back to original, that's just my personal thing and has the original style of sign writing, something that's been put back in its original colours and yet there's guys here that love them in their original working clothes and they like to see a bit of rust hanging out or a bit of faded sign work and there's other people who like to see them with shiny rims and a little bit of extra chrome on there to modernise them a little bit. I mean the tastes are out there and that's what makes it great. We're all, we're all individuals um, but we're all here for the one thing and we're all into the same thing and that is we all love our early historic vehicles. Yeah, so for this time, um, my, my father's 79, and as a lot of guys would know, when you get to 80 years old, you have to renew your truck license. Dad's made the decision to to not do that, and so we realised that this is the last year that he'll be able to drive the comma. So I decided that I wanted him to drive the comma down this time. My wife and I had, had done it together the last two haul in the Humes, so Dad decided to get behind the wheel this time, and um, I have three older sisters. I decided to invite them along with Dad, and to have a, a drive with Dad for one last time. And for a family affair for me, it was extremely touching. I feel very, very fortunate that I've been able to not just enjoy this with my old man, but to be able to restore a vehicle with him. I'm very privileged. And so many of the men that I've met on this have lost their fathers. And um, it's, it's not an easy thing. They're doing this to remember their dads. And I've been able to do this with my dad. And I'm an extremely fortunate um, person to have been able to do that. I'm Peter Murphy and I come from Wagga and uh, this is a 1923 Model T Ford truck which I bought from West Wyalong and I restored it um, 43 years ago. Bring up Razorback, it went pretty good. Um, just before we got into Goulburn the throttle fell off it and we, but we fixed it easy because it's easy to fix. Um, yeah, but it goes pretty good. It's got a little overdrive gearbox in it and it'll sit on about 75, 80 kilometres an hour which is pretty good for a Model T, yeah. Oh, hello Tamara, my name is Des Walker. Yes, today Tamara we've left uh, Windsor about uh, 7 or just after 7 and we've just more or less come straight through to Goulburn here to the uh, showgrounds and the trot and track so we've got everything on display here and yes it's quite good and there's a good crowd here by the look of it so and lovely day so everyone should be enjoying themselves. I've got a 5.30, a 5.20 Diamond T truck with a 308 American Black Diamond and a five-speed crash box, and it sits on about 85 k's an hour. Yeah. Yes, I come from Nilma North at the uh, just out of Warrigal in Gippsland, and uh, I went to Sydney in 1958 and spent 10 years driving interstate there, but, and then I moved back to Melbourne and freelanced around, and then uh, I've been up and down the uh, highway for about 34 years altogether, and uh, I've enjoyed every bit of it. My name's Liz Martin and I'm the Chief Executive at the National Road Transport Hall of Fame. Oh, it's been a really, really action-packed weekend. We flew down from Alice Springs to Sydney and we borrowed this little truck, which is an F600. So it was really interesting for me to see some of the iconic places that I've talked about and had people talk to me about for years, like the hole in the wall and Picton and Mittagong and uh, Razorback Mountain particularly with the, with the blockades there. It's all stuff that's been legendary part of our road transport history and I think a big highlight for me and I see it everywhere I go in the industry is the camaraderie and mateship in the industry there's no uh, class distinction there's no I've got 36 trucks and you've got one and there's no age barrier the young blokes are all there learning all the bits and pieces off the old blokes and it's just really good to see them all there and all working in and I think that's where our industry stands out from other industries it always has 
I think with the Static Museum it, it sort of gives the uh, industry a home for its history to be kept and promoted to the broader community and we see our role at the Hall of Fame part, as part of educating the broader community about, to, about the transport industry. This sort of thing is really important because it fosters a relationship between the young people in the industry and the older people in the industry and I just love seeing that interaction. There's no, there's no distinction between who's got fleets, who's an owner driver, who's a driver, who's, who's 75 years old and who's 21 years old. Everybody gets in and all enjoys listening to the same engine, trying out this truck, looking at that bloke back in that corner, they just all get into it. Yep. Another thing that surprised me was the variety of the trucks that are here, not only in the different makes but in the different ages. We've had little T models there from 1911 and they're tiny little things, right up to great big uh, Peterbilts and, and Kenworths and, and a couple of nice old Macs in there as well. But we've also had the middle of the range stuff, we've had some Diamond Rios, Diamond Ts, Republics, um, all sorts of different vehicles up and down at Gasoline Alley here, it's a little bit like uh, walking through a static parade where you can stop and actually physically look at the truck as long as you like. So when we when this run um, when we found out that this run was going to generate uh, income, which was probably the last thing that we expected, we decided that we would raise, try and raise a little bit of money for Aspect. I spoke to the to Ron Kirk and to Brad about it, and I just um, they knew my my little boy has got autism, and we decided to donate the money to Aspect, which is Autism Spectrum Australia, and Aspect's a fantastic group. It definitely helped. Um, Rachel, my wife, and myself um, in the raising of, of our boy and the early intervention, which is what all these kids need. Pulling the Hume will be on again in 2017. If that seems too far away, here's some great news from Roger Marchetti. Rob French and myself are uh, organising Crawling the Hume again for April next year, uh, which goes from the Ford factory in Broad Meadows to the Albury Racing Club in Albury, where we finish and have dinner. Uh, following the old Hume Highway uh, as much as we can all the way through. So I hope everyone can come and join us. You can read more about hauling the Hume in the May issue of Owner Driver magazine. This is Tamara Whitsed. You're watching Truck TV.